Okay, so in the driveway today, we have a very dirty Husqvarna YTH24V48. It has a 24 horsepower Briggs & Stratton Intec V-Twin on it. Now this mower runs fine. The problem is when you go to shut it off. And we'll show you what it's doing here. So as you saw, instead of shutting off immediately when I turned the key off like it's supposed to, the engine continued to run for a moment or two, just a bit worse, before it finally died. So the reason this is happening is we're having an issue with the grounding circuit for the coils. So inside this cover, there are two ignition coils, one for each cylinder since this is a V-twin. And in order to shut the engine off, when you turn the key off, it grounds out those coils, which kills the spark, engine shuts off, simple enough. The problem, what I believe is happening, is only one of those coils is getting grounded out. So what happens is instead of the engine shutting off, it just runs on one cylinder until it exhausts whatever fuel it has left since this uh, particular engine has an anti-afterfire solenoid. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to check and make sure that the ignition switch is grounding out the circuit to the engine, which I believe it is, and then after that we'll pull this cover off and see what's going on underneath there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the lawnmower side of the circuit is correct. We want to make sure that it is grounding the coils out when the key is off. So this is the harness where the engine connects to the rest of the mower. The meter is set in continuity. You see, makes a tone. So, the wire we're looking for is this one right here. It's a black wire. So we're going to just go ahead and put that in there and check it to ground. And we have continuity to ground. So the mower side of the wiring is all good. The problem is under the shroud. Okay, shroud off now. You can see the harness that runs to the coils. Now there's no obvious damage to this harness. However, you notice right here, this isn't just a splice. It's kind of hard to see, but inside there, there's actually two diodes. They use diodes to isolate these coils from each other so they don't back feed each other and cause a no spark condition. Now what I suspect has happened is one of these diodes has just burned out so only one coil is being grounded out when we turn the key off and that is something we can test as well. Alright with the tester on diode mode I've unplugged the harness from both coils as well as from the mower itself so we're going to put the red lead onto the black wire where it comes in from the mower chassis we're going to go to each terminal and just as i suspected we have overload no continuity so this coil is not being grounded out properly so if we check the other one and we got 15 so the diode is working properly for this coil over here and we'll also check to make sure that the diode is actually functioning correctly Put the black on the black wire. And it's not. Looks like the diode is actually shorted. So we have one shorted diode and one open diode. Now, there's two options here. Option one is we can buy a new harness. Option two, which is the option I'm going to go with, is we can actually replace these diodes. It's a little more work, but it's cheaper. 
So I tried to cut the heat shrink to expose the diodes and uh, this happened. It just fell right apart. So those diodes were completely burnt out. Now for this, you'd probably use a 1N4007 diode. I don't have any of those on hand and I don't really want to buy some and wait for them to show up. So what I do have on hand are these 1N5408 diodes, which are way beefier than they need to be and bigger, but it's what I have, it'll work. So this is what we're gonna go with. So we're gonna put that on, we're gonna heat shrink it. Now for you doing this at home, you might wanna just go ahead and solder it, but I have these. These are non-insulated butt splices. And so I am going to use these to attach my diode. Now when you install the diodes, you want to make sure that the line is facing in the direction going towards the coils so that the polarity is correct. And yes, not the best crimps in the world, but they're secure, it will work. So I'm going to be wrapping this diode with some heat shrink so that it doesn't come into contact with the other one and defeat the whole purpose of the diodes. Always make sure your heat shrink is on before you make your connections or you might have a trouble getting it back on afterwards. Slide big heat shrink over. Hopefully I got the size right. Harness is all back in. I'm gonna have to fix that at some point. Let's give it a try. And it shuts down right away, just like it's supposed to. So everything should be good to go here. I just need to put the shroud back on but it's looking like it's going to rain on me right now so I'm going to cut the video here if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them down below